Good job, everyone. Allegations of genocide were recently filed at the International Court of Justice, not against Hamas, even though the preamble of their charter says Israel will continue to exist until Islam destroys it, not against Iran, even though their leaders have repeatedly called for wiping Israel off the map, but against the state of Israel. That's right. Israel gets viciously attacked, women and children tortured, raped, killed by the hundreds. Israel fights back, but the International Court of Justice drags Israel into the court because South Africa accuses them of genocide. Now, some of you may think this is a bad joke. The rabbi had a bad week, and this is what he's starting with, an early Purim prank. I wish it was. I've been to Auschwitz and Triesenstadt, Treblinka and Birkenau. I have seen what genocide looks like. I saw those places and learned about the complex and well-planned operations designed to exterminate the lives of women and children, whole families and villages. This past Tuesday, I joined hundreds of Estonians in watching the videos of a modern day attempted genocide. With the Israeli consulate, we viewed 46 minutes of images from October 7th taken from Hamas social media and Hamas body cameras. I saw terrorists working to kill as many innocent people as possible to try to commit, and they did, unfortunately, a mass extermination. The exact opposite of what Israel is doing in Gaza. Tonight I want to explain. Last Thursday, South Africa was given the opportunity to present their case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. South Africa's legal team tried to argue that Israel's blockade, bombing of Gazan buildings, and comments by some Israeli government officials demonstrated Israel's intent to completely destroy and murder the Palestinian population of Gaza. The next day, Israel was given time to respond. And you should feel good knowing that Israel's response was resolute and well executed. Israel's highly regarded legal team highlighted the false nature of the charges. They provided persuasive evidence to counter South Africa's request for provisional measures aimed at, <coughs> excuse me, at halting the war against Hamas. There were four main counter arguments that Israel presented. Number one, Yes, as South African legal officials argued, there have been troubling remarks by some Israeli government officials calling for the cutting off of humanitarian aid or the mass removal, not murder, but removal of the Gazan population. However, Israel's legal team countered that these comments were a distorted representation and did not reflect actual government policy. They underscored the importance of distinguishing individual remarks from official stances. And since the beginning of the war, the Israeli government and those actually implementing policy, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, have said and acted upon their goals of eliminating Hamas, freeing hostages, and doing the best they can to spare innocent civilians. Number two, Israel's lawyers emphasize their commitment to, <coughs> excuse me, ethical conduct in warfare. You can be proud knowing the IDF has a widely known ethical code guiding their campaign, ensuring the military actions are solely directed at military targets, taking many precautions to reduce civilian deaths, going above and beyond what other militaries have done in similar situations, implementing policies to protect civilians and urging, actually warning where they're going to bomb so civilians have time to evacuate. And as regrettable and heartbreaking of the loss of non-combatants is in Gaza, it's not the goal or the strategy of the IDF. It's Israel's advantage not to kill Gazan civilians. But here's the challenge, as Israel's legal team pointed out. Unfortunately, as we know, it's to the benefit of Hamas for innocents to die in Gaza, preferably at the hands of the IDF. Israel's teams pointed out that the IDF is fighting a full-scale war against a terrorist military of over 30,000 fighters 
with a massive arsenal of rockets who has spent decades now and millions and millions of dollars digging an underground world of hundreds and hundreds of miles of tunnels woven into the civilian society and with the design to reverse engineer what we think of as the laws of war. Hamas's strategic goals are unlike any other war that a military has fought in the history of the world. Unlike other wars, the Hamas strategic goals are not to hold terrain, protect their own civilians, or defeat Israel's military, but to sacrifice their civilians to cause the international community to force Israel to stop so Hamas can survive and they can hold on to precious hostages. Number three, Israel's legal team also noted the glaring omissions of South Africa's presentation, including the strategic reliance of Hamas on fighting from within civilian areas. As we know, Hamas fights from homes, mosques, UN facilities, schools, even hospitals. Every day we see more and more evidence that in Gaza, nearly every school, every mosque, every second home was connected to a Hamas terror tunnel. And unfortunately, urban warfare in a place as densely populated as Gaza will inevitably result in civilian casualties, even in the thousands. And Hamas uses its people as human shields as a strategy makes matters, unfortunately, much worse. And number four, perhaps the most important argument that Israel's legal team made. A significant point raised by Israel was that the allegations brought by South Africa pertain to the laws of war rather than what's called the Genocide Convention. The Genocide Convention was signed in 1948, led by Germany and countries throughout the world to protect innocents and to prevent further genocides. By South Africa seeking the court's intervention, Israel argued that South Africa may be abusing the court and potentially undermining the spirit and why the Genocide Convention was created in the first place. Because the Genocide Convention was created to stop actual genocides. And defining genocide is the intent to destroy and whole or part a national ethical, racial, or religious group. And a legally plausible cause for genocide required a demonstrated intent, actions of ethnic cleansing. Not what Israel's doing. Not a war of self-defense against terrorists. If the court can be used to decide how countries can fight defensive wars, then how will any country, like America, ever be able to defend themselves against terrorists who hide among civilians and hold hostages from that country? My friends, it's hard to say how the International Court of Justice will rule. I wish I could tell you that judges on that court are impartial, but there are judges there from Russia other countries not friendly to Israel. Also hard to fathom that Russia hasn't been brought up on charges of what they're doing in Ukraine, or China's doing to the population, their Muslim population in China. In the long run, the case against Israel could, God forbid, lay early groundwork for sanctions against Israel, or the prosecution of Israeli officials, military and government officials. And in the short run, any day now, the court could issue a provisional order calling for a ceasefire, making it even more difficult for the Jewish state to continue its war against Hamas and bring back the hostages. Now, I want to end on some good news, because this is all very depressing. And I do look forward to the day when this war is over, and I'll be able to give a lot more lighthearted sermons. But I do think it's important for us to continue to be informed so that we can speak with our friends and neighbors and make sure they understand what Israel's truly up against. So some good news. The United States government on both sides of the aisle have made emphatic statements, most officials, protecting the state of Israel and calling that what Israel is doing in Gaza is no genocide. Even Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who's not always the best friend of Israel, rejected the premise of South Africa's case against Israel. The foreign minister of France said yesterday, Israel's not committing genocide. And here's what's amazing. Germany firmly rejected the allegations against Israel. The German government was, after the United States, 
the first world's major government to emphasize Israel's right to defend itself against the inhumane attacks by Hamas. A German spokesperson, government spokesperson, put it perfectly. Quote, in light of German history and the crimes against humanity that we did during the Holocaust, the German government is particularly committed to the UN Genocide Convention. Finding Israel guilty of genocide does not help. In fact, he said, it makes a mockery of the International Court of Justice demonstrating that the Genocide Convention is simply being used for political means by Israel's enemies. Germany's government, there to help Israel. It is amazing how history changes everything. Yes, unfortunately, I've been to extermination camps, and I've studied genocide, and I've seen its terrible and tragic consequences. And now I've seen the worst of the videos from October 7th. The war in Gaza is no genocide. And labeling it as such contributes to the most poisonous type of Jew hatred. It endangers all of us. And it also cheapens the term genocide and puts all innocent people at risk. What a disgrace to the victims of actual genocides all over the world. And such an accusation insults the memories of those killed in actual genocides, including the Holocaust. South Africa and those who support her should be ashamed of themselves. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.